Hey everybody, what's up? Thanks so much for joining me on this live stream. My guest today is Michael Jones of Inspiring Philosophy. If you're a subscriber to my channel, then I'm guessing most of you probably already are familiar with his channel. Uh, but for those of you who might've been living under a rock for the past 10 years, uh, Michael, your channel is mostly focused on Christian apologetics, philosophy, theology. Um, I guess being on YouTube for a decade makes you a bit of like an OG YouTuber at this point. Um, and so, Videos are always high quality, extremely well-researched, cover a wide range of topics that pertain to the Christian worldview. With that said, today we're gonna to be talking about a platform that is, well, not really known for its intellectual depth or rigor. I'm talking about TikTok here. I've given the app a try myself and I usually delete it within about 24 hours or less because I feel like I just am losing brain cells every time I use it. But since joining TikTok, you've really amassed a pretty good sized following and have been able to reach a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, what what are, what are you doing on TikTok, man? <laughs> what gives? How'd you get on there? Well, yeah, I've been on it for about five months and I got about 11,000 followers. Uh, so the reason why I joined is it felt like, to be honest, it felt like I was called to join it like a year ago and I was stubborn and didn't want to for a lot of the same reasons you mentioned. Uh, I, I didn't want to learn something new. I was comfortable on YouTube. Uh, but then some things started happening. So, for example, YouTube changed their entire algorithm in like September. And I talked to other mm -hmm. creators, atheists and Christian, the same thing was happening to them, which is that oh, we saw our view counts drop, ad revenue drop, just everything was falling off. Uh, and YouTube was promoting shorts like crazy. Well, yeah. they're trying to compete with TikTok. An article came out, I think, in 2021 that said TikTok got more traffic than google i was like holy cow that's pretty yeah. big so i realized it was growing i started to see my channel started to decrease and i'm like well you know if, if this is the end of my main apologetic work fine but like there was no other doors opening like i tried seeing if there was any possible job ish things i could take and nothing so i was like well either i'm gonna like get pushed in the background and my content will become like old I guess is the word I'm thinking of, um, or I need to change, modify how I'm doing things. So I joined TikTok. Uh, <laughs> didn't really want to, to be honest. I did it kind of kicking and screaming, but there's a lot of cringe on there. There's a lot of really bad theology. It reminds me of YouTube back when YouTube first started get, get got going, like like zeitgeist yeah. stuff, young earth creationist stuff, a lot of just weird conspiracy theories. That's TikTok now. There's a lot of bad stuff on there and people just believe a lot of this stuff. I was dumbfounded. People just buying up whatever creators tell them. So when yeah. I do videos, I'm putting sources in them. Like here, don't take it from me. Here's what this scholar said. Here's what that scholar said. Like, tr don't, don't trust me. Just, Cause I want people to get this idea like, oh, you should be giving sources for these claims you're kind of making. And so I'm hoping that'll start to pick up more and people will stop believing things they just hear on TikTok. But I joined basically it. I felt like that's where the younger generation was going. That is where, and you know, my videos were starting, YouTube wasn't promoting like long form content anymore. So I was like, crap, uh, I better do something here. So it was about reaching a younger generation, trying to make sure that uh, my channel continue, my ministry continues to grow and help people. Uh, and since I d did that, I've actually had some pretty good testimonies already. Good, no, that's awesome. Maybe you could share some of those um, as yeah. we kind of go along because I I have just, like I said, maybe I'm 43. Um, and so I get on the app and I just get like grumpy old man, you know, old man shakes fist at cloud kind of because I'm just like, there's so much cringy stuff on there. Um, but the responses that you put on there are like, there's a lot of humor in them. Um, there's a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm shocked at some of the stuff that's <laughs> that goes on on there. Oh, yeah. And we're going to look at some of it. Um, but at the same time, I have seen people, uh, because, you know, I'm on social media elsewhere who will share these things and are like literally shook by them. Like they're really bothered by them and it's causing them to like spiral into, to stuff. And so, um, Jesus, you know, he left the 99 to go after the one. And even though I might think that it's something that somebody says on TikTok is really cringe and really just kind of silly. And it's just like, I can't believe anybody would believe this. I also have to remember that I've been studying Christian apologetics off and on for the past 10 years. Uh, you've been obviously doing this for a really long time. And um, like, I just remember like being um, involved in uh, a certain job, like 
it had a, that it required a lot of technical expertise uh, with web hosting and different things like that. And I just would remember like getting a fresh batch of new hires and it's like, oh, right. I have to go back all the way to square one. And so, um, but yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, maybe you'll talk me into to joining because I'm definitely in the kicking and screaming phase at the well, moment. Here's so. the thing. Like, I want, I want to say like, I didn't like join because I was worried like, oh no, no one's paying attention to me anymore. It was more like, I feel like I'm called to do ministry and my, the, the, the algorithm is changing. How do I keep doing online ministry? Um, or I just right. get a new job and, and get out of it. But like, there were no opportunities there. I felt like God was still calling me to do that kind of thing. So that's right. one of the biggest reasons I joined. And I, I'm encouraging more apologists like you to get on because it does seem this is where the younger generation is. The average audience I'm getting on TikTok is in their teens, early twenties, not mm. people, you know, like our age, like, you know, 43, almost 37. Uh, but there is a lot of really, really bad content on there. Just a lot of like really just bad theories that needs to be corrected. And so when I joined, um, I made an announcement, hey, I'm on TikTok. And I figured, you know, oh, that'll spur, get a little excitement. But then I got a, a lot of large TikTok Christian apologists started like advertising for me, telling people I was on like bought, uh, bought by blood, uh, Big John Steele others as well and so i was shocked at like that which really helped me grow pretty fast and then i started getting some testimonies like i got in a big debate back and forth with a mormon scholar on there named Dan mcclellan on if the old testament uh in leviticus 18 18 uh forbids or outlaws polygamy and it was a silly little argument it wasn't like that important but someone saw those videos and it got them interested in christian apologetics and then they sent me their testimony saying that was the first stepping stone that got them back to Christianity. So little things like that have actually helped already, yeah. which I'm very happy with. Yeah, it, it's crazy um, how something little like that can can do um, have that kind of effect. And you're right, there's a lot of younger people on there. Um, I mean, even when I look at my YouTube statistics, my demographic is anywhere from 18 to 30. And then you have this other demographic that's just spending a lot of time on there. It would kind of almost be a dereliction of duty for somebody to not get on there. And so um, I did want to watch a, a few of the videos uh, just because maybe we're on YouTube, so maybe not everybody's watched. Um, and I, I just want to get people a little uh, flavor of the of the cringe here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and maybe we can. Well, TikTok, we, for those who don't know, TikTok videos typically are about a minute, maybe three minutes. Yeah. If you go, you can do 10 minutes now. Uh, that wasn't when I joined. That was a new feature they just added. But if you go more than three minutes, they don't promote your stuff as much. If you go more than a minute, they don't promote your stuff as much. So the more time you add to videos, uh, the less it's likely to be promoted. So you want to keep things short and precise. And so I try to keep right. videos a minute at the most under three minutes. Right, right. So we're going to watch one of your responses right now just for people to get the feel and uh... – I just find these videos to be like absolutely hilarious. And uh, my 15 year old son, like as soon as he <laughs> saw these videos, like, dude, he went through them like fast. And so I give me in this crazy stuff. Did you know that there was 10 books that were removed from the Bible that if you taught them or owned them, you could be killed by who the Pope's <laughs> secret force of ninjas. Get your pens and paper out because these are the books you could be lynched for for owning today. Lynched. <laughs> I got copies of all sorts of books that were not included in the canon. No secret church squad has pulled up on me. The Gospel of Mary the Magdalene. That was never included in any Orthodox canon. The Gospel of Philip. Also never included in the canon. The Gospel of Thomas and the Tale of the Twin. Nope. The Book of Enoch. That's still part of the Ethiopian canon, and last time I checked, Ethiopian Christians were not being rounded up and executed. There is, however, no evidence that the Jews included it in the Tanakh. See this video for more. The secret book of James. Gnostic texts were never part of the Orthodox canon. The Apocalypse of Paul. Probably dates to the 4th century, and no, not included in the Orthodox canon ever. Letter of Peter to Philip. Again, Gnostic documents were not included in the Orthodox canon. Are you just assuming because an ancient document existed, it was somehow part of the canon at some point? The Apocalypse of Peter. Finally, you got one sort of right. It's true a lot of early Christians did accept the Apocalypse of Peter as authoritative, but it was ultimately rejected because it likely contains heresy, there's no evidence it was written by Peter, and it was not necessary to teach the faith that the apostles handed down to us. 
but it was rejected after the long process of the formation of the canon, and you're not going to be killed for owning a copy. The Gospel of Truth. And we're back to being completely wrong. The Gospel of the Egyptians. Gnostic documents were not included in the Orthodox canon. The biggest problem is he is assuming there's just one canon. Various Christian groups disagreed on what should have been included in the canon to teach the faith that was handed down from the apostles. Ultimately, most Christians settled on the canon of St. Athanasius the Great, which is the canon we have today, because it seemed to encapsulate the Christian faith best. And I'm glad it took a couple centuries for the canon to develop, because it shows us the early church was trying to use their reason to try to figure out which books would best encapsulate the Christian faith. Are you ready to have your mind blown? Blow an aneurysm? Yeah, because you're going to probably make me. <laughs> this dude. No. Oh, I love how serious. Oh, no. Whoops. This is something I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to play that one yet. I'm sorry. Um, anyways. <laughs> I yeah, so it's um, that's the kind of stuff you get on TikTok is like people saying outlandish, crazy things to try to get views. And it's just blatantly incorrect. And so like, but people have noticed my videos on TikTok are more comical uh for one for two reasons um uh, because stuff on there is just so bad I, I don't know how to to deal with it other than to just tr to, to try to make it humorous and two i've right. just reached the point where i just don't really care what people think about me anymore so i'm just trying new things i guess at this point but uh it, it was yeah that's that's kind of stuff you get about tiktok i have seen videos 10 times worse than that uh where i just am like i don't know how i could respond to this without making the person looking so incredibly stupid and be so incredibly like just mean that I just, I have to let it go, but it's just so bad. Like I saw one video of a girl claiming like the way you get to Mars is to go through the ocean and there are also mermaids there. And I was like, how do I even justify doing a response to this while treating her like a serious adult? I can't. Yeah. So, I mean, that is something that I think I have had some people say to me about TikTok is they're like, I just can't be on there because I feel like I'm going to lose my patience <laughs> and I'm going to like just snap at people. And maybe they feel like, or even maybe a, a softer way of putting it is maybe they just are afraid of, of getting sarcastic or, or being, you know, kind of um, ridiculing things a little bit. Um, and so what would you say to that somebody who's like thinks that like maybe ridicule or sarcasm is is wrong you know what i'm saying it's not like a it's like an unchristian thing to do okay well remember that elijah did this to the prophets of baal he was mocking them okay jesus sometimes would make little jokes or throw insults at his opponents this is just something that happened quite often that doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong it has to be balanced of course um, maybe we don't do it perfectly all the time, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong. And plus, let's remember there are people on TikTok that are believing this stuff. Okay. Right. The image of God is on there believing this stuff. And we are still called to go to the lost sheep and try to help them as best we can. That's why I'm on there. It is one of the fastest growing. It is the fastest growing social media network right now. Uh, I have, I'm seeing signs. It could be, get even bigger and really start to challenge YouTube in serious ways. So I'm on there now trying to grow, trying to correct some of this false information and bring the gospel to a crowd that is hearing some crazy outlandish stuff. Right, right. Uh, again, Jesus was heavily sarcastic. I mean, the prophets could at times be heavily sarcastic. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with sarcasm in the sense that if you're trying to just completely denigrate the person, um, then that's one thing. But it's, it, when you're just pointing out the utter absurdity of what people are saying, in a humorous way that's going to grab people's attention and just show you that like, Hey, these claims are absolutely ridiculous and bogus. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. And I think Christians get a little too uh, spooky when it comes to using sarcasm. It's almost like just because you become a Christian, you, you lose your sense of humor or something like that. And that's, that's kind of ridiculous. And so now how do you find the content to respond to? Do people <laughs> tag you in? You said stop tagging me in this stuff, but is that yeah, how I you get, get a lot of this? Cause I was people just like wondering, cause I've scrolled and scrolled and I'm like, all I see is people dancing and twerking and doing weird things. And like, <laughs> where is he finding this stuff? Yeah. Well, when I joined uh, people, I said, Hey, I'm on here. I'm gonna do some videos. Maybe I'll do some Q and a type stuff. And then people started tagging me and stuff. The first video someone tagged me in that I'm like, I have to respond to this. This is so bad was who I call the cheese it lady uh, because there was this, yes. this Torah observer, Hebrew roots type person, this woman named um, 
she was claiming that the book of revelation says the mark of the beast it translates to jesus which sounds like jesus jesus is the antichrist but th that's because you know his real name was yeshua and you know the the evil world has you know worships jesus who's the antichrist not the same as yeshua or as she says yahusha which sounds like she's sneezing uh but that's what they're trying to get at so i responded to that because i was like this is just so bad like uh, like how do like like how do you even get to this point where you think like like you find some weird blog and you just believe it's truth without checking it with scholars because they think the three letters that form the mark of the beast is pronounced jesus which is just demonstrably false but after that i did that response and people started tagging me in other stuff and i it just kept going and now that's what i do on tiktok is i respond to cringy stuff so you just the, the problems find you. You don't necessarily have to find them. They just yeah. I don't. I have a hard time like you know, going through videos, just scrolling. I cannot. I I scroll through like maybe at the most ten TikTok videos, and then I I have to stop. It's just not my brain's not built for that. But when I go through my notifications, people will tag me and stuff, and then I'll look at what I've been tagged in and respond to that if I have time. But I get tagged in okay. like twelve or fifteen things now a day, so I don't have time to respond to everything. Right, right on. So, um. Here I'm gonna I'm gonna show another one because this this one I don't know this dude is like my absolute favorite right here and so um, I oh, just you 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 wait until I upload the video to YouTube of the guy saying <laughs> Yahweh was a dragon I was <laughs> and then he his evidence is he shows you pictures of Chinese dragons or dragons in like Arabian texts and I'm like are you high like this doesn't <laughs> follow like what are you talking about. Yeah, so it's 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 just absolutely mind numbing. But Stop this guy scrolling. right here, <laughs> NASA just found something that proves God's existence. Listen to this: Hubble telescope finds most distant star ever, giving glimpse into early stages of the universe. So before I continue, the star that they found, the note was present at the early stages of the universe. Let's keep looking. The star is over 50 times bigger, millions of times brighter than the sun. What is the name of this star that they found? What did they name it? Let's see. They named the star the morning star. You may think to yourself, how is that biblical? Before I show you the scripture, I want you to establish this in your mind. They found a star that they note was there at the beginning of the universe. They named it morning star. In the book of Job, God <laughs> says to Job, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? So God is speaking about early in the creation of the universe and the earth. And he says in verse 7, when the morning stars sang together. God notes that the creation of the earth in the early stages of the universe, there was something called the morning stars. NASA admitted it. Follow for more. Wow. Where to begin? So many problems here. First, they actually named it Irendel, which is an Anglo-Saxon word meaning rising light or morning star. Notice they did not give it a Hebrew name or use the phrase it is used in the book of Job. Second, notice in Job it's about laying the foundations of the earth. If you're going to interpret this scientifically, it cannot be about the beginning stages of the universe because the earth came into existence many billions of years after the universe began to exist. This star they found is billions of years older than our planet. Third, what's happening in Job 38.7 is Hebrew parallelism. The same thing is repeated in the following line with variation in wording for poetic emphasis. So basically, this is about when divine beings, or what we could call angels, are celebrating or rejoicing when God laid the foundations of the earth. And notice the book of Job is talking about morning stars, plural. It's not talking about a specific star that was present during the early stages of the universe. It's talking about divine beings rejoicing when God laid the foundations of the earth. And how does scientists naming a star Arendel prove God exists? If scientists found a luscious right. valley and named it Eden, that would not prove the book of Genesis is true. It would just prove they're using biblical names to name things. Guys, there are good arguments for God's existence. This is not one of them. Please don't do this. Oh, man, that was painful. But my favorite part is just the the stop scrolling. <laughs> it's just like, bro. Well, they do that kind of stuff scrolling. to get you to like Nasa watch just the found video. something yeah. that proves God. Yeah. So I was sorry. like, you know, I'll react to what he wants. Like he, re that's what he wants people to do. I mean, when you say that kind of thing on that loud <laughs> voice, you want that kind of reaction. So I might as well just react it out for comedic purposes. But yeah, it's he, that's apparently he claims to be a prophet. Uh, and right oh, then and there no. is a red flag. And it's like, first of all, anyone who claims to be a prophet is 
I'm, I'm immediately red flags going off in all direction. And you better have some pretty good evidence for that uh, because uh, that's a pretty bold claim to make. God has made you a prophet. All right, what evidence do you have? And then if you're putting out such bad arguments like this for God's existence, I mean, yeah, it needs to be debunked. So, you know, I don't want this to be like what people think of when they think of Christian arguments for God as a theist. I want them to go to the good arguments. So let's get get rid of these before you know someone picks it up as if this is what theists use. Yeah, and I think that is kind of one of the benefits that I've thought about when I was watching these videos is even though it seems like you could be accused of like, oh, you're just picking on low hanging fruit and this is just ridiculous and this is absurd. Um, when you get Christians on there making a bunch of silly and ridiculous claims like this that are just like mind numbingly, frustratingly stupid, um, you don't want people to think, people already have this prejudicial thing in their head, a lot of people, that Christians are just kind of brain dead doofuses. And so being able to get on there, call this out for what it is um, and bring some kind of common sense to the table um, can help relieve people of, of that pressure, especially the younger generation and the way Christians are characterized all, in all kinds of different media. And so how would you respond to that though? That like people would say that like, oh, well, you know, Michael, you're just picking on like low hanging fruit and like, you know, like mm -hmm. why, why aren't you debunking like the, 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 the highest of the highest, you know? Well, but I, I have, I've done videos going after Bart Ehrman uh, on YouTube. Right. Um, I'm doing a 43 minute video in August on the documentary hypothesis, which is put forward. And I'll be responding to scholars like Joel Baden, who's a top tier scholar, very intelligent man. Um, that's just part one of a series I'm going to do in the documentary hypothesis. I do respond to the top tier uh, skeptics, critics, you name, whatever they want to be called, scholars. Uh, but I try to preserve that for like well thought out videos that I want to spend time on on YouTube, TikTok. But so, but the low hanging fruit also needs to be addressed because people buy into it. Go through some of the comments on the videos I've responded to. People are going, "Wow, this! I I knew this was the case. This is just so true." And I'm like, oh, "You're people are actually buying into this? Okay, then it needs to be addressed. If they're convincing people, it needs to be addressed." Plus, I okay. use these short videos to advertise for my long-form content. As you noted in the first video you played, I advertised for a book I did on Book of Enoch. I'm trying to show people, look, I have long-form content on YouTube. You can also go to to see more better, see better, more well-thought-out responses. Check those out as well. So these are good okay. in a couple of reasons in that, A, there are people that buy into this, and B, it's a good way to get people to go look at the long-form stuff. Right. So have you found like an increase in like subscribers and different things like that since you've been on TikTok? Does do you feel like it feeds into your channel? I mean, your channel is already pretty large to begin with. So maybe. So, yeah, I was having basically stagnant growth in like January, February, and that has changed now. I think a lot of it's because I've been taking the TikToks and uploading them to YouTube as shorts because that's all YouTube mm -hmm. wants now. They want short stuff, short, short, short. If I would have uploaded a 20 minute video a year ago, it would have gotten 50,000 views in like two weeks. Now it, I'm lucky if it gets 20,000. Uh, they, they're just not promoting it anymore. But my short form stuff and my short specifically are getting, some of them are getting hundreds of thousands of views. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta feed what the, um, unfortunately, since we're on YouTube, you gotta do what the algorithm wants or wants or else you're going to, they're not going to promote your stuff. They don't promote your stuff. Yeah. You don't get the gospel out. So it's like, you got to adapt to the culture. You got to adapt to what's out there. Like as Paul said, to, uh, to become like those under the law, I go under the law to become like those. To become like the Jews, I become like the, jo the Jews. You get it? He adapts. The same kind of right. idea. Okay. So that's the, the kind of mentality I'm following, of course. And I think it has been working. Um, I did see – I again, I was, I'm currently still under budget. Like I'm, I'm not fully funded as I was like a year ago. Uh, but I'm slowly getting back up there. Uh, but that's just because the algorithm changed. Like literally everything like just changed. And so now we're trying to beat it. But I mean – so yeah, it has helped a little bit, especially getting me back – slowly getting myself back to being fully funded. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I know as a fellow creator who's just trying to start, not even near the level where you're at, um, it does seem to have changed a little bit, I've noticed as well. Um, I don't do as much longer form stuff, but I've noticed that like, and well, if anybody's a YouTuber out here, here's a little hint that I've tried. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that this is an actual true thing, but the more community post that I do, if I do a community post that gets a lot of reactions the day I post a video, my graph will like, it'll be flat. And then all of a sudden, 
at when I once I post that about seven hours later, it sees like this uptick. And so YouTube mm -hmm. is really wanting you to do this short form content. They're really wanting you to do these community posts. They're really wanting to get you get people engaged. And so you do have to adapt. Um, and that's one of the things that I've noticed. And um, like I said, I'm still in the kicking and screaming phase, but so far, <laughs> <laughs> like um, I'm seeing that there probably is some kind of value to to get people there. And, and it's like you said, that's it's where people are at. And you do get tagged in a lot of questions. You have a lot of opportunities to um, answer those questions. And so tell us a little bit about that. People tagging you, asking you questions. Um, I feel like that's a very personable way to reach out to people. Yeah, it, it does make you feel more personal. I, I This is new for me because I like to hide behind the scenes. I'm more of an introvert. But I mean, like, I feel like God's been wanting me to come more out of my shell. So I've been trying to do more of that, and it's been making me more personal, I guess. But yeah, people, there's a lot of people on TikTok that have like basic questions they need answered that they don't know. And it's surprising uh, for someone like you or I that studied a lot of this stuff. But there are things like people, uh, like the other day I answered a woman's question. Someone tagged me in her video saying, answer this for her. So I said, I will. And then she was grateful. Um, she replied, said, thank you. So I, I did a response. And uh, she was saying things like, does the Vatican have the original copy of the New Testament? And I'm like, well, no, that was probably lost. And saying things like, um, how do you know uh, what they're telling you is not lying? And so I was able to explain some things. Look, here's some stuff about textual criticism. So it, it does help people because a lot of people on TikTok don't know uh, what's going on in the apologetic world of YouTube or in the right. academic world. Uh, so if that's where the people are, they need to be the information needs to be brought to them. And that's why I'm, what I'm, I think we need to be on there trying to do that, especially if TikTok is going to become the number one platform, which it has the potential to right now. As much as I don't want to admit it, as much as that bothers me, because right now I think Facebook is still number one, but Facebook's gro gross rate is like 0.1% or something very low. TikTok is climbing like crazy and they're probably going to pass up uh, Instagram pretty soon here. And then eventually YouTube, I'd say. Yeah, that's, that scares me in a way, just because it's just like three minutes is not enough time to really establish a lot of things. And it just seems like it's an indicator to me that people's attention spans are just turning well, into the, the attention span of a, a grapefruit. Here's one of the things. Like when I do YouTube videos, I always refer to books. Like you want more? Here's a book you can read. Here's a source I'm using. Right. Go read it. Well, same thing with my TikTok, TikTok videos. Look, here's a short video that gives you a summary of some stuff. Like the other day, I, I responded to some guy claiming Jesus wasn't buried. So I did a, a back and forth with him over like two videos or so. And I referred to my law. Look, if you want more, here's where I cover pilot. Here's where I give more evidence that Jesus was buried. So it's a good way to like use YouTube as like your library for long form stuff. And then TikTok is like little flags saying, hey, if you want more, read this or see this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I thought it would be fun um, to respond to a TikTok live uh, on a live stream. This person, I think her name is uh, Biddy Buddha or something like that. I've seen her on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm not really on TikTok, but I'm familiar with her there. Apparently, yeah, she has she is, like uh, hundreds she, of thousands of followers or something crazy. She's one of the big uh, TikTok atheists. Um, she's, she's definitely, I, I, I would classify her as pretty intelligent. I don't think she is. She's not by far the worst out there. I do disagree with a lot of the stuff she says, though. Like, we'll get into it here. But, uh, yeah, she's definitely one of the bigger atheist TikTok, TikTokers I've seen. Yeah, I would say compared to the some of the stuff we, she, we watched, um, yeah, no, she's she's definitely not um, the, the, the bottom of the barrel. So nobody can no. accuse us of just saying you're just making fun of, like, the worst of the worst because uh she's definitely got some some points and we'll we'll get your response here so here we go let's talk about the tower of babel interesting enough is this biblical story is actually based on a historical building we know quite a bit about the tower okay. of babel but none of it actually lines up with the bible Many okay so here's the problem with what's sort of going on. She's presenting this hypothesis regarding the Tower of Babel as if it's a fact. Uh, this is one hypothesis some scholars actually have about where the origin of the Tower of Babel comes from. The problem is that she is she's not presenting it saying things like, hey, what about the Tower of Babel? Well, here's one scholarly opinion, and here's what I hold to. She's presenting it almost as if this is a fact, and this is definitely not a fact. This is just one hypothesis. So mm. that's the first thing I want to say, but we can get into the other issues later. Okay. Assyriologists have concluded that the Tower of Babel is actually at Timanaki. And here's my sources, because I know you're going to ask for them. 
first difference is this was a temple made for the god Marduk. Marduk actually existed a thousand years before Yahweh was even invented. Second, we know the first destruction of this temple was in the early 7th century by King okay. Sennacherib and the Assyrians. Not Yahweh. <laughs> so, first of all, does Genesis 11 say the Tower of Babel was built for Yahweh? It says... In verse 3, it says, And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitmen for border. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a, a city and a tower in the tops of the heaven. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we disperse all over the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down. And and that and they are confused their languages so that they may not understand one another nowhere in there it says that they were building a tower for yahweh so right then and there we already have an error okay it doesn't say that um what was the other issue uh it says that yahweh came down to see it and then he dispersed them so it's this idea that you know he's the high god they're building this tower it says in the text they're building it for themselves to make a name for themselves not building it for yahweh so right then and there we have an error uh she's also talking about how this is um based on an actual ziggurat that was built in Babylon. Maybe. Um, I have problems with this whole theory, though, but we can get to that at the end. I guess we can listen more. Okay. And we know that it was rebuilt and completed in the reign of Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar in the first half of the 6th century, which is 150 years later, which is roughly 500 years after the alleged exodus. Ugh. Now, Christian apologists try to arbitrarily place the tower construction around 2100 BCE, but they can't substantiate that so, because then pause. it would be exact. So this is she's she's saying Christian apologists lumping us all together as if we're all young Earth creationists. Uh, that's this is what young Earth creationists do. They try to do it because they want to hold to a strict literal reading of the biblical timeline, which I do not. I actually place the Tower of Babel at about th around 3400 BCE. Uh, not even exact, like it's somewhere in there, uh, because I'm not a young earther, but this is another thing you see on TikTok. They sort of just lump every, all of their, you know, uh, opponents into one group. I, I've been trying, I've done that as well, to be honest. Uh, I tried, I'm now trying to say some skeptics or many skeptics will say X, Y, and Z. So I, I try to do that more now, but this is another issue. She also said it's like, a, a, you know, Marduk existed like some 500 years before Yahweh it was invented. Well, you know, assuming the atheistic worldview that, you know, Yahweh didn't exist. You could say that maybe it was before Yahweh revealed himself to Israel. Uh, but we would say, of course, you know, that Yahweh revealed himself to Abraham prior to that. So just, a, just another assumption that's thrown in there as if it's already a fact, it, like she did at the beginning. Right. Exactly 500 years after the global flood, which is incredibly problematic when you consider the population growth rate necessary to achieve the global population that the Bible mentions. But that's another TikTok. Now you're probably asking yourself, if that is all true, then why did the Hebrews assimilate this Babylonian ziggurat into their mythology? Because myths like these were created to be culturally explanative. Meaning, this is just the way ancient people explain the origins of language outside of their ethnic group. And now you know just a little bit more about the Tower of Babel and how another story inside of the Bible is bullshit. Oop. Let's I meant to edit that part out, but that didn't yeah, happen. This you story are now going to hell, sir. Way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Way, to Way to go. Okay, so here's the thing. If the Tower of Babel was the uh, ziggurat from Marduk, I forget the name that she used. I, and I'm forgetting how to pronounce it on top of my head now, even though I just heard it. So having a brain fart there. But if it was that ziggurat, it seems weird that they would use that because that tower was that ziggurat was completed and it was still in use through the exile and when the hebrews left babylon like why would you tell us about us about an actual ziggurat that is still in use and claim that it was like it was abandoned like the city was abandoned babylon was not abandoned at that point uh the persians were still there you know alexander the great comes in and lives there it's eventually abandoned centuries later but not when the biblical texts were being written especially that uh so problem there plus it says it was like in the distant past and like she is so she's having an issue here she's saying that this is where people thought languages came from but this is also based on a tower that existed during the babylonian period well hold on if the hebrews are talking about this in some distant past before multiple languages existed 
they can't be talking about the current tower because they're talking about a time when there were people were all in one area and they dispersed everywhere. Okay, so which is it? You can't have both. Again, it is a theory that's that they made this mythological account based on the ziggurat at, at uh, they saw in Babylon, but that just seems too far fetched for me. If they're talking about it's in some distant past, a city that was abandoned, uh, the tower uh, that had a ziggurat like this, th there's a much better candidate, and that would be the city of Eridu, which had the same toponyms as Babylon. So the the way the Babylonians sort of treated Eridu was A. R. George notes this is that the toponyms that were used for Eridu were applied to Babylon. So it was almost like a continuation, like when Eridu was abandoned uh, in the Uruk period, uh, Babylon sort of appropriated a lot of the toponyms and the languages of Eridu. So you could see it as sort of like an older Babylon. Hmm. That city was abandoned. Uh, there was a massive ziggurat there. That would be a much better candidate for the Tower of Babel incident because it's in the distant past than positing this idea that the, the Hebrews were just making a myth about their history based on an already completed tower that was still in use in a city that was still in use. It just doesn't really add up. But of course, the biggest problem is she's presenting all this as if it's a fact. Scholars like A.R. George will say, this is a theory they have, this is a hypothesis, but they can't prove that, of course. That's just how history works. Mm. This is one of my biggest problems with TikTok is that they sort of present things as if they're fact all the time. And so I'm trying very hard not to do that. I'm trying to use languages like it's probable or it's plausible or it's it, this is likely what it leads to. Yeah. Yeah. There's kind of a lot of like, if you say it with a high degree enough of confidence, I found with a lot of these TikTok atheists, like uh, her, I've seen Captain Dadpool who are kind of a little bit more of the more uh, educated um, people who, mm -hmm. who, who do read this stuff and know a little bit about what they're talking about. Yeah, but then I, in the way that they say things, it, it lumps everything together. Like, like she was doing like everybody's a young earth creationist. And if they just say things with enough confidence, um, then people just are really easily swallow it. Like, wow, this person really yeah. knows what they're talking about. And to give someone like Captain Dadpool credit, he had a video where he accidentally said, like, the, the Nag Hammadi documents were hidden in the Qumran cave around 70 AD to hide them from the Romans. So I commented on his video and I said, this is wrong. Uh, you're talking about that you're mixing up the Nag Hammadi and the Qumran library. And I checked like a couple days later and it looked like the video was deleted. So, hmm. you know, props to him for that. I don't know if that was directly what led to it, but it seems like that may have been something that indicated that he realized he made an error, so he took the video down. So good on him for that. Right, right. So um, so it's not just low-hanging fruit. I mean, there are people here who, like I said, have a, a little bit enough what they're talking about, but enough to, I guess, be dangerous. And it's it's people like this who, I'm, I'm very interested in reliability issues, particularly with the New Testament, um, that I would feel like would be definitely worth responding to. And so that's why I wanted to have uh, that video on and just kind of get your two cents on this. Um, and so um, the one thing with TikTok, and I, I thought this was a good quote, um, this is a 18th century author, George Horn. I'm always pulling out the old dead apologists probably because um, I just follow the McGrew so much and they're always uh, pulling out the old dead apologists, but it's a uh, pertinence and ignorance may ask a question in three lines, which it will cost learning and ingenuity 30 pages to answer. When this is done, the same question will be triumphantly asked again the next year as if nothing had ever been written on the subject. <laughs> and as people in general, for one reason or another, like short objections better than long answers in this mode of disputation, if it can be styled as such, the odds may be ever against us. And we must be content with those for our friends who have honesty and irritation, candor and patience to study both sides of the questions, be it so. So if uh, George Horn lived to the, see the days of TikTok, I think, uh, his head would probably explode. He's probably turning that is over in his grave right now. So relevant. I mean, I get tagged and stuff all the time about like issues like the problem of evil on TikTok. And I'm like, I know I don't have time to respond to that. I have long form videos that have addressed this already. Please see those. But like, how would I respond to that in three minutes? But you can state it in like 30 seconds and people go, oh my goodness, this is so true. And it's like, well, hold on. What is the actual data here? What can we, what are the actual, what is the other side saying? And of course he's right. It's going to take 30 pages sometimes, but. Yeah, that's wow. That's relevant. Yeah, I just thought that was a really good quote. And so um, we could probably wrap things up here. And so what would you say as far as like advice to somebody who uh, apologists are either on TikTok or looking to get on TikTok? Um, what are some of the ways that they can use the platform for good? And then um, what are things that you would recommend that they would? I guess it's a two part question here, but what kind of things should they avoid and just just advice overall in general? 
Well, first I'd say get on TikTok because it, it is growing. There is a need for sound theology and correct information on there. Uh, and, you know, I mean, not all of it is bad. I got in a back and forth with some atheist. I think it's called, it's like Dremlite or something. I forget how to pronounce his name. But his final reply to me was like, you know what? I'm wrong. You're right. My bad. So, I mean, there is hope. I mean, there there are, uh, so you, if we get on there, you should use your sources, credit for information. And, you know, props to him for being so humble and willing to say that. It was, it was really ad admirable for him to do that. But so advice is to get on TikTok, start getting some information out there. Get on there, uh, announce to your current followers on YouTube, Facebook, t Twitter, wherever you are. I'm on TikTok now, follow me. Tag me in stuff you want to see me in. Uh, help me uh, respond to some stuff out there. Ask me questions, because TikTok has a pretty good way to respond to questions. You can favorite a question, um, and then it goes into a save folder. And when you click on like your you know record button, uh, you can pull that question up, and it will be on the screen, and you can just respond to it there. So you can do short little things like that. So... Get on TikTok, let your followers know, start doing short videos, then take your shorts, upload them to YouTube. That'll help your reach as well. That'll help your growth because that's all that YouTube wants now. They want to compete TikTok as well. So think of it like that. Uh, this is where the culture is going, unfortunately. Um, as much as I prefer to do the long form content I traditionally do and will continue to keep doing that, that is, that is where my heart is. That's what I want to do most of. We need to start doing short form things like TikTok now. It's good promo stuff. It helps get people interested in Christian apologetics. It gets, gets people interested in facts. Uh, start using it. Their attention spans are dropping. They're not, it's very unlikely now that a, someone who is 16 is gonna click on a video I did that is on 45 minutes on the resurrection. But they might click on like a minute long TikTok video and I could reference that video in my TikTok video, the long form video. And then the one minute video might go, oh, this might be something I might be interested in. Let me go watch the long form stuff now. So thumbnails alone are not going to promote people, are not going to get people to watch videos in a day when attention spans are dropping like rapid. But if they watch a one minute short video, it might get them more interested in the topic and then they might wanna go watch the long form content. So think of it like that. Um, I found it incredibly useful. It is, it is again, I was basically dwindling in growth and funds in January and February, and getting on TikTok has reversed all of that. I'm still not fully funded, but we're trying to get back there. Uh, but, I mean, good things are happening. So go with what the culture is going, going with the algorithm is going. Don't be a grumpy old man and get stuck in his ways because we need to adapt to the culture as Christ commanded us to. But I want to be a grumpy old man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, you can be a grumpy old man on TikTok. I'm a grumpy old man on TikTok. I get grumpy, <laughs> with people, but I mean, I turn it into dry humor, and it helps. Yeah, it's kind of a lot of get off my lawn going on here. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's good. It's 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 definitely entertaining, and like you said, it, it reaches a younger generation. Like I said, um, my son is 15 years old. Uh, well, I have I have two sons, um, one 13, and he likes the order. Uh, the, the long form content. He likes your long form content, but when he saw the TikToks with the humor and all that other stuff, um, he just thought those were hilarious and he ended up binge watching Good. like a bunch of them. And so, um, so if it's getting him interested in this kind of stuff, um, then I definitely can't complain about that. Um, and so definitely uh, check it out, follow IP on TikTok. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe this grumpy old man will jump on there at some point. I know uh, my friend Than from Exploring Reality, if he's watching, he's always, like, dude, you need to get on there, man. Come on. Like, yeah, he's on there so. too. And yeah, he's been on there for a while now. Uh, so uh, yeah, help him grow as well too. He's got some good stuff as well. But I mean, yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good people on TikTok uh, that people should go out and follow. Is there any pitfalls, things that people should avoid on there? I mean, I know okay, the first so thing you... I realized is I have to put a family filter on because I'm like, I don't really need to see this much. <laughs> yeah. TikTok is very sensitive. I've learned this the hard way to certain things. You got to be very careful. You're not too insulting or bullying. Even if you don't think you are, TikTok may interpret that. And so I've had two videos removed because they thought I was bullying. Really, I was responding to people who responded to me, but apparently I was bullying them. So you got to be careful with that. Don't use, don't say things like, uh, like certain keywords, like don't say white supremacists. Because if you just say, if you say white supremacy is dumb because it, and it, white supremacy is dumb, TikTok will flag your video. Um, like, so I did a video where I responded to someone who claimed Christianity is a white supremacy cult. And I pointed out that's a stupid argument, but because she said white supremacy in my video, I was permanently banned from TikTok for 17 minutes. 
My entire TikTok page was deleted. I appealed it, and of course it was reversed, but it scared the crap out of me. Uh, so be right. careful with certain buzzwords like that. I won't respond to certain things now because I know that you know I could get flagged and stuff. But I mean, they're very they're very jumpy with certain buzzwords, so be careful with those. Um, and just try to stick to the facts as best you can, and you should be okay. Most of my videos that have been flagged or taken down have been overturned. So I did a bunch of responses to Muslims. Um, all of them were like flagged, and all but one has been overturned and been put back on TikTok. Yeah, I feel like, well, yeah, that's probably what David Wood has run into with YouTube and why he's jumping mm -hmm. off the platform, just because it's like you just get so many trolls who it seems like they have the most paper thin of skin. Um, and they're just yeah. going to flag everything that you say because, you know, how dare you insult um, the prophet. And so, well, cool, man. I really appreciate you taking the time. And um, any any parting words or any – what are some of the videos that you got coming out as far as the long-form stuff on YouTube? Like what are some of the upcoming projects that you might want to let people know are coming out? Oh, great, great you're asking me. So that video I showed you is coming out in a week on did Jesus name the wrong Zechariah in Matthew 23? Um, I'll be doing that. After that, I'm doing uh, part three of my Exodus Rediscovered documentary on the conquest, which will have the most evidence for the uh, Exodus in that video. Um, I have like 19 some issues to cover showing supporting the conquest. I have a video on if Joshua said the sun stood still after that, uh, arguing nice. that we should read it in its cultural context. Then I'll begin my series on the documentary hypothesis, uh, which will be a long fun series uh, challenging that, showing that it's riddled with problems and we should probably hold to something else. For those who don't know, the documentary hypothesis is the view that the Pentateuch was originally four separate sources. There were two different flood accounts, two different creation accounts, and they combined them all into the present form of the Pentateuch. And I will be challenging that. Good. Good. I'm glad you're doing a lot of this Old Testament stuff. I get people asking me and I'm just like, um, there's a lot to learn there and I'm just not there yet. And so I'm I'll stick with the New Testament. Thank you. But um, eventually it is a topic that I want to get more into. And, and I have bought, a, you know, several books just of people that you've mentioned, scholars that you've mentioned in the video uh, because of that. Like uh, Kenneth Kitchen is one of the books that I oh, really grabbed recently. Peace so. be upon him. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so awesome, man. Um, well, I would encourage everybody. Uh, Inspiring Philosophy has a uh, Patreon. So uh, definitely support him there. Uh, definitely go check him out on TikTok. Definitely check him out uh, on YouTube um, because what we're doing on YouTube, um, these these videos uh, and TikTok and different things like that, um, it really is uh, missions um, for today. And I know you get lots of testimonies about people who, um, who are doubting or struggling with the faith. Uh, maybe they weren't fully convinced yet, or maybe they were a Christian, but aren't. Um, we're starting to have doubts and have come back. And so um this is important ministry um and uh yeah it's just it's it's where the culture is at and we have this huge opportunity to reach people uh that we really just haven't had before um and then oh i got a looks like we got a super chat ah from one foot out the door keep it up all right well mm -hmm. thank you for that super chat i really appreciate that um and so uh Anyways, I'm just kind of eyeing and eyeing here, but yeah, that's definitely support this man. Uh, this is this is important stuff, and I've just seen so many testimonies. Um, in, in your comments, I'm shocked at the amount of testimonies that you get uh, of people who are skeptics or or people who were doubting their faith. And um, to me, that's like extremely encouraging. And one of the reasons why I persist in making videos is just seeing the testimonies that you get um, makes me want to persist. And I've received a few of my own, and so mm -hmm. this is. Um, this is important stuff. So um, not to not to <laughs> toot our own horn a little bit here. It's all the grace of God. But um, yeah, again, thanks so much for joining me, uh, Mike. And and I, it was it was a good time. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, thanks for definitely having me. definitely keep the uh, the humor going. Um, do you still have the tinfoil hat? <laughs> I can make <laughs> another tinfoil hat. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, but come on, let's not, let's not repeat the same joke. Let's try new jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that one anyway so well cool all right well thank you everybody so much for watching this live stream i really appreciate you joining and um yeah this is uh get on the tiktoks and and you know say how do you do my fellow kids and all of that jazz so <laughs> all right oh, man, so we're old yes we are it's sad so all right thanks for joining guys